Good morning, everyone. So we're on day three, or official day three of the AT. It's about seven o'clock in the morning and we're getting a early start up bud. And we're gonna head into Neil's Gap today. So we're getting her done. It's cold, so I'm gonna get hiking. So stay along for the ride. Hey guys, so we're getting her done. Um, I got about three and a half miles in for the day. Um, got about two miles and stopped and had breakfast. Had some oatmeal, cranberries, a cup of coffee. So it's a big climb day, but it's done in sections. So it hasn't been terrible as of yet, but the big up to the top of Blood Mountain we haven't done yet. However, I just wanted to spend a few minutes with you. I'm huffing and puffing. So the name of Blood Mountain. So there's two theories on this. One is that years ago, there was two Indian tribes, the Cherokee and the Muskegee. And they had a huge, I believe it was the Muskegee. And they had a huge battle and a lot of bloodshed. So that's why they called it Blood Mountain. The other theory is there's a lot of lichen, which is a deposit. And it's at the base of a lot of mountain laurel. So, or the, uh, yeah, mountain laurel. So what happens is when it rains, that lichen leaches out and goes down the mountain that's red. So some people think they call it Blood Mountain because of that. I'm going with the big Indian fight but that's a little tidbit. So it, it is the highest point on the Appalachian Trail in the state of Georgia. And the shelter that's up there is known as Stone Shelter. Stone Shelter, I'm sorry. And it is the oldest shelter on the whole Appalachian Trail. So that's kind of some history for the trail. So I've kind of separated myself from everybody else so I can concentrate on my videos and trying to do a little more history on the trail because I mean the history on this trail is just amazing if you dig into it the, the people that have walked it and the amazing things that they've done it's just cool so I mean I wanted to do the trail for me but I also want to learn as much as I can and getting into the history of it's been a lot of fun so I'm just gonna keep doing that and sharing tidbits with you guys. So all in all today is a great day, a lot better than yesterday. Sun shining, I'm getting ready to peel off the, I'm almost to a water source and I need to camel up. So I'm gonna peel out the beanie, get off the raincoat, put the gloves away and uh, get into Neil's Gap. So, so far a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day outside. My goodness, it's just gorgeous. Great day for hiking. So I'm gonna keep taking you along with me if you'll stay along for the ride. All right, guys, here it is. Top of Blood Mountain. What a view. Holy connection fit. Well, I'm here to tell you it's everything they could say it was. I've been watching videos and seeing this for years and Man, oh man, this is gorgeous. All right, guys, stay along for the ride. Who knows what's coming up next? All right, guys, so this is the famous Blood Mountain Shelter. The absolute oldest shelter on the Appalachian Trail. And it is, it, it is, I don't know that I'd want to stay in it, <laughs> quite frankly, it is not concrete forest, but it is a very cool shelter. So I showed you the site and show you a little bit about the shelter here. Doesn't have any windows or doors on it. So, but it is cool and it's made of stone. So it's even cooler. There it is. 
That is just a really, really, really cool shelter. And then of course, if you come up here, you, you get to see some more views. Man, it's just gorgeous up here. Well, there it is again. A little bit of a opening here. Holy cow, guys. It's gorgeous. All right, well, the temperature is a little cold up here. So I'm gonna get the pack on, head on down to Neil's Gap, mountain crossings, get something to eat. I noticed this morning that I have a rip. It's not terribly bad, but it is a rip in one of the straps on my backpack. So that kind of concerns me a little bit. So I'm gonna have them look at it at mountain crossings and see what they suggest. Uh, I don't think it's terrible, but I just want them to look at it and make me feel a little better. I'll go from there, but I've done uh, about five and a half miles today, uh, 2,071 feet in elevation gain. So we're gonna be heading down. However, coming out of Neil's Gap, I'm gonna go straight up. So I don't know how many miles I'm gonna do today. I don't know where I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna enjoy mountain crossings. I do have a box to pick up there, so it'll depend on when that gets delivered. So, but I'll, I'll keep everybody in the loop. So I'll keep taking you along with me if you'll stay along for the ride. All right, guys, I'm headed down to Neil's Gap and I just had to stop. Here's one more view from the top of Blood Mountain. My goodness. It is a little hazy, but oh my God. And I will tell you something that these videos, I'm sure if you've watched video or YouTube channel, people to hike in the AT, you've seen this a thousand times, but these videos do not do this view justice at all. All right, stay along for that. guys well this is it we're going down the back side of blood mountain or the front side however you want to look at it for me it's the back side so i will say though there's a white blaze uh however the trail coming off of blood mountain has not been very well blazed um so i mean it's not a big deal you just have to pay attention but you know, a few more blazes would be nice. So, I just have to keep looking ahead. There's a white blaze there. So, up there at the top, it was tough. All right, well, I just wanted to touch bases with you, let you know I'm going down by the mountain and I'm headed to Neil's Gap. I can hear the cars already. So, I should be about halfway there. So, all right, well, I'm gonna put this away going down these rocks, but here it is going down the back of Blood Mountain. Stay along for the ride. Okay, guys, well, I talk about walking through the green tunnel on the AT. Well, it gets a lot fuller in the summertime, but this is a good example of it. All the rhododendrons. Or these might actually be mountain world. I'm not sure. I'm not a expert on plants and vegetation, but this is it. So we're not that far from Neil's Gap. I can hear water in the road. So just taking my time. I've been hiking with a couple guys, but they're young. And Jake, the one guy, we're calling him Four Pack. That's his trail name. He's from Chicago. He's been with me for the last couple of days. And he woke up this morning though, he felt like his trailer legs were, trail legs were coming on. So he's meeting up with Gazelle and I'm gonna do some miles today. And my trail legs just aren't on yet. And besides that, as I enjoyed being with those guys, I really did, they're hilarious. But I wanna concentrate more on my videos and really seeing some of the sights and really digging into some of the history of the Appalachian Trail. So, this is okay by me. 
And of course, I'm in the bubble, so everywhere I stop and camp, there's gonna be people. So, it's okay. All right, well, we're doing it. We're getting a lot lower, so stay along for the ride. Hey guys, all right, well, we basically have gotten done by now. And we are taking the final approach to Neo's Gap and Mountain Crossings. So, this is pretty cool. There's a little building there, you'll get to see it in a minute. That was the original building that was built by the conservation, uh, conservation group back in. They started building it in 1932, I believe, and they finished in 1934. I actually have the facts written down, but something like that. Not sure what they use the old building for, uh, but it's still there. So here we are, just coming off the trail. Looks like it's not terribly busy, but there's the famous tree of shoes. So a lot of people will get here right now. We're at mile 31 of the Appalachian Trail. A lot of people will get here and call it quits. So, all right. Well, here we go. Going across the road. Hopefully, we're not going to get hit. Right into mountain crossings. Ooh, we made it. All right, there is. I don't know how well you can see it. But there is the tree of shoes. Well, I finally got a chance to film out here with nobody here. So this is uh, Mountain Crossings. And this is the old building that's been here since the 1930s. So it is really cool on the inside. Um, they're a little pricey, but they are what they are. They're the only game in town for a long time. So, or for a lot of miles, especially if you're a through hiker with no vehicle. So one thing I wanted to show you though, is I think I can. Well, no, I can't. I'll move down here and show it to you. So there's only one place on the AT that actually is covered. I'm trying to get away from all these people, but it's actually right here. So in order to stay on trail and stay on the AT, you actually have to walk through this breezeway. So there's the white blaze, and then you walk through this breezeway to stay on the AT, and then there you go, up and straight up that mountain is the AT. So this has been a great stop, um, I needed a few things, I needed some tent stakes. Um, my tent only came with the basic tent stakes which after reading the directions, it tells you that, which I was unaware. So in order to vent it out so I don't get as much condensation on it, I went ahead and decided to get some more stakes um, just so that I can get some more air movement in there and it doesn't get so wet. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm a lot happier today with the tent than I was than the first time I put it up. So I think it'll be okay. Uh, it was just learning how to maneuver the tensioning lines and that kind of stuff. So. But uh, I bought a pair of gloves too, because I bought a pair of gloves right before I left, but I lost one of them. And my big gloves uh, got holes in them and they're not waterproof. So, um, so anyway, so I did buy a pair of gloves. They were a little pricey. I spent 30 bucks on them, but it is what it is. And I needed fuel. Um, I got some string cheese. That was kind of my thing to do. So anyway, we're getting, uh, I got my food box too, so that's great. So just tidying up a few things, we're gonna hit trail. So, so far it's been a great day. <laughs> All right, I'll keep taking you with me. If you'll stay along for the ride. Hey guys, so we're about almost two miles away from Neil's Gap. So I wanted to take the time to answer the question I know that's gonna be asked, because this will be about the third, maybe fourth video 
So, the answer is no. Johnny is not with me. And as much as neither one of us like that, that's just the way it is. So she got a really, really, really good opportunity at work. It's just one of those opportunities you don't pass up. And we just, we changed directions. I changed time to do, I just, it just, uh, just wasn't gonna work out. So, unfortunately, uh, she stayed behind. However, she's probably more a part of this hike now than she would have been standing right here next to me. Because she's sending me all my food boxes. She's giving me moral support. She sent me one of the, one of the most awesome little notes with my box today. So I know she's here. And that's all that matters. She's gonna be hiking with me. Uh, every chance she gets, she's gonna come out and get on trail. So you guys will get to see her. And most importantly, I'll get to see her. Sometimes you have once in a lifetime opportunities in all as aspects of life, whether it be doing a trail or work or go back to school or whatever it might be. And this time she just had to take that one. So it's been kind of emotional for me because I miss her, but you know what? We're gonna make this happen and I know she's rooting me on and uh, we're gonna make the best of it. So I just wanted to get that elephant out of the room. So I figured I was gonna get asked a million questions. So there's your answer. All right, well, we're gonna keep it on here. I'm gonna try to go another, I think it's like another maybe three miles to a campsite. I need to dry out, but um, I'm also gonna try to call that hostel. So from a mile away from Neil's Gap, I was 36 miles away from the hostel. And I'm supposed to be there on Wednesday, which means that that's over 15 miles a day for the next two days and I'm not going to do that. So I'm gonna call the hostel and I'm gonna see if they can push me back a day uh, or what their options are. I know they've been picking people up at different places. So I think there is actually a different pickup uh, that's closer than Dix Creek. So I could probably just do that. So I'm just gonna call and talk to them uh, and see. And had I known I was gonna be doing as good as I am, I probably, and my, that my gear was gonna work out the way it is, I probably would've never stayed there to begin with. But I've already paid for it now, so it is what it is. Move on. All right, well, I'm getting ready to get up to a peak here. I'll show it to you when we get there. But right now I'm going to pill, so I need both hands. All right, stay along for the ride. Hey guys, well, we're at the end of uh, day three on the AT. And I did 12.2 miles, made it to a campsite. Um, we did well over 3,000 feet in elevation gain today. So tomorrow we're gonna try to do 13.4. We've kind of changed our plans up. We're still going into the hostel on Wednesday. It's just, uh, I'm going to, instead of getting picked up at Dick's Creek, I'm gonna get picked up at Unicoi Gap. So that's uh, about 16 miles from here. So we're gonna do 13 tomorrow and then we'll do an easy three on our way in. That way we can get in and get picked up early and spend the whole day at the hostel, uh, getting stuff done, videos uploaded, laundry, shower, yada, yada, yada. So anyway, so that's kind of the plan. It was a really good day. Saw a lot of great things, had a lot of fun today. So uh, listen, I'm gonna keep bringing you along if you'll keep staying along with me. All right, you guys, we'll see you in the morning. Good night.